And that former President Trump will not be convicted in his impeachment trial that is happening, and it kicks off later today. We know that there are not enough votes from Republicans to make it happen. And today, the question at the core is whether this trial is even constitutional. Uh, Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut, the Democratic leader, he had this to say on Fox News Sunday. It says this, I admit this is, of course, a matter of first impression, and so I don't think the case that Senator Paul is making is a ridiculous one, responding to the argument that the second impeachment trial of Donald Trump is unconstitutional. Our panelists are back now, uh, Jaden Horn, Kelly Hyman, Brian Trasher. Brian, I'll go to you uh, to kick this segment off here. Um, your thoughts again back on impeachment and what we're seeing. And then also there are a lot of constituents out there that believe they want their, the folks they elected to, to move forward. What happens after this trial happens? What should the party be focused on in order to move past now this second impeachment that, impeachment that is all but certain to be an acquittal? Well, you know, Senator Murphy is right. This is not a constitutional act. Uh, there's a consensus in the legal community that it's unconstitutional, so much so that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court has refused to preside over it because it's a sham. It's not a constitutional uh, process. And it's just a matter of, uh, of political grandstanding by the Democrat Party. Um, they know they don't have the votes. They know they cannot do anything that will preclude President Trump from ever running again. Um, so they're just wasting time and taxpayer money. As far as where the Republican Party goes from here, it's very simple. First thing we do is purge all the rhinos, primary everyone who it does not adhere to conservative Republican principles. Uh, and if they survive their primaries and put up a third party candidate against them, who does espouse those values? Uh, we also control most of the state legislatures in the country. We need to go state by state and enact widespread voter reform, voter ID, signature matching, uh, automatic audits, uh, everything that went wrong in the last election, uh, which uh, no matter what Chris Cuomo says, Fredo, uh, as they call him, uh, did have some widespread massive fraud. That has been proven and evidence has been brought forward to show that, although most of the mainstream media want to ignore that. As we all know, uh, impeachment is to remove a sitting president from office. And, of course, President Trump, former President Trump, is no longer in office. So, Kelly, again, it does kind of make you question the constitutionality of this trial. Of course, that's the vote that we're seeing later today. How are you viewing this trial? Do you believe it's constitutional? Well, I would, I would have to first disagree with Ryan that legal scholars don't say absolutely 100 percent that it's unconstitutional. We can agree to disagree. Um, there is some arguments that it is unconstitutional. There's other arguments that it is constitutional. We have to remember that the House of Representatives can impeach the president. Trump was the president when he was imp impeached. The fact now that he's out of office is, is irrelevant. However, I really don't believe that there's going to be enough votes to convict him. But um, ultimately, the American people need to see what's going on. And as I said before, if Trump really has nothing to hide, then he should testify. Uh, they only need a simple majority to push this one forward. So they have those votes. Uh, even with a tiebreaker, and this goes down party lines, you'll have Vice President Kamala Harris, which you've already seen step up earlier. Uh, that could happen. Nevertheless, it looks like there are some Republicans that would vote for it to move forward. So we'll pay attention to that as it does. But meanwhile, this, uh, many have talked about his moment to come back into the spotlight, former President Trump. Uh, Democrats have admitted that much of the impetus behind this is to prevent President Trump from running for office again. Uh, if he should be convicted, Again, he would need 17 Republicans. It doesn't look likely. Uh, Jaden, what about a censure vote? Is that still possible? Do you think you'd see that? I mean, how ridiculous. Look, what we're hearing from Democrats is that Donald Trump did multiple impeachable offenses. And ultimately, he's no longer in office, and yet, you know, we're hearing the rhetoric that they want to impeach and convict. And to walk it back and, and censor a, a previous sitting president, um, again, what is the precedent they're going on? You know, the, yeah. the famously cited constitutional case of, of the, the former elected, uh, the former um, cabinet secretary that was impeached after the fact in the late 1800s, uh, he had resigned and the House impeached and he was ultimately, you know, convicted. And that that is the entire precedent yeah. from which... Uh, Democrats are based. Jaden, I, I hate to and, interrupt. We're, you know, we're out of if, time for, for our panelist block. Of course, uh, Donald Trump would be the first president to be impeached twice, as we know. Jaden Hornan, Kelly Hyman, and Brian Trasher joining us live this morning. Thank you, panelists, so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, a new hour of National Report. That starts right now.